Don't get mad. Please don't get mad. Welcome to the Tarantula Collective. My name is Richard. Thanks for joining me for this Thursday video. We're calling it Three Minute Thursday and I keep meaning to change the, the graphic, but I haven't got around to it yet. Uh, maybe, maybe next week. Um, or maybe this video will be three minutes. I don't know, you know before I do because you can see the little timestamp and I haven't finished recording it yet. I just started, it's like 30 seconds long maybe. But I wanted to talk today about something that really isn't about my tarantulas. It's about a YouTube video that's been sweeping the internet lately. And I'm sure you know by like the title or the thumbnail who I'm talking about. Uh, it's a new video that came out by Ants Canada. But before we go any further, I'm not hating on this guy. I'm not hating on his channel. In fact, I'm subscribed. I enjoy watching his videos, even though I hate ants. I don't like ants, but I, I enjoy watching him. But he did post a video up recently about his Postlotheria Metallica uh, having this immaculate conception. He had bought the tarantula from a local pet store, and after having it in his collection for a while, it had an egg sack and hatched, and there were babies everywhere. A lot of people were saying that it was a phantom egg sack, I guess, when he first said something about it, but now that he's got babies, obviously that wasn't the case. So he kind of posited the idea that it was uh, like an immaculate conception, like they're Jesus babies, or something. What's the um, matter with but you? It's technically, I think, called parthenogenesis, where a female doesn't need a male to breed. You see it a lot in like reptiles, and I did do some research. There are a few species of spiders that do have that ability. But as far as I know, there are no tarantulas that are capable of that. It would be very cool if that was the case, because tarantulas are so threatened and endangered all over the world. It would be nice if you didn't have to have a male and female to pair every time you wanted to breed. But unfortunately, there is no scientific evidence that any tarantulas have that ability. The way I see it, there's really only two possibilities, and neither one of them is parthenogenesis. One possibility is that the tarantula was owned by someone who did breed it, got an egg sac, and then for whatever reason sold the tarantula off. In which case, if the tarantula hadn't molted since it bred, it could possibly still be storing some sperm, as some tarantulas are known to be able to produce sometimes two or three egg sacs from one pairing. So that is a possibility, that whoever bred them got their egg sac, it, I mean, it could have been whoever sold it to the pet store, and that P. metallica was still storing that and decided to inseminate itself and produce another egg sac. Highly unlikely, but it is a possibility. But what's more likely is the second possibility, which is also kind of disturbing. We all know that there is a huge problem with wild-caught specimens being brought into the pet trade. It happens all over the world. It's going on in Mexico and Brazil and you know all throughout Asia, where a species becomes popular in the hobby and to profit, you have people that go out, capture them, and then smuggle them out of the country and sell them in the pet trade. It's kind of like the dirty secret of the tarantula hobby that nobody likes to talk about, but everybody knows it happens. In fact, every species that we have in the hobby at some point was taken out of the wild and bred in captivity. But the reality is with most of these tarantulas, there are plenty in the hobby that have been captive bred, and there's really no need to continue to take them out of the wild. And it is true that because of deforestation and, and logging and just destruction of their habitat from urban sprawl and so many other reasons, many of the species of tarantulas are threatened or even endangered, some very close to going extinct, especially the Postlotheria metallica, since it is from such a small region. But there are a lot of them in the hobby and people are having no issues breeding them. Pretty much every dealer here in America has some available for sale. So the need to pull them out of the wild just doesn't exist. For someone to do that, it's really just a money grab. They're just trying to get some animals to sell and turn a profit. So it's very possible that someone took this gravid female out of the wild, smuggled it out of the country, and sold it to some pet stores in that area. And the owner of that pet store may have known it was wild caught, but there is a possibility they didn't know. And they sold it as a captive bred or just unknown, who knows? And when Ants Canada bought it, assumed since he got it from a pet store that he trusts that it was a captive bred specimen. And I would be surprised too, if I bought a female tarantula I assumed or was told was captive bred and all of a sudden it had an egg sac that was producing spiderlings. Can't blame the dude for being surprised there or confused. But this really underlines the importance of making sure that when you're buying tarantulas, you're getting captive bred specimens. A lot of people look at the tarantula hobby out of the side of their eye 
just because we're collecting venomous spiders. They don't understand the allure, they don't know the beauty, they just don't appreciate them like we do. So they already think we're weird just because we're keeping tarantulas. And then when we tell them we're breeding them and selling them and mailing them, yeah, they get a little freaked out. But what really upsets people is when they find out you're going and pulling threatened or endangered species out of their natural habitat just to turn a profit and sell and you know keep in your basement like this. And wild caught specimens are, they're, they're just a part of the hobby, unfortunately. You know, anytime there's a new species discovered, people are gonna run out and try to harvest some from the wild so that they can bring them back and breed them and sell them. I mean, it's a capitalist world. Profit is what drives almost everything in this world. I mean, cash rules everything around me, right? Am I right? So maybe that part of it's unavoidable, but we don't have to feed into it. If there are captive bred specimens available, Always go for that. Yeah, the wild caught specimen may be a little bit cheaper, maybe a lot cheaper, but one, you don't know what you're getting. You, you may be getting a gravid female, or you may be getting a male that's very old, and that just isn't gonna live very long. There could also be serious issues with mites and nematodes and all kinds of health problems, and you could be bringing back, you know, funguses and spores and, you know, microorganisms into your collection that normally wouldn't have ever been introduced had you gone with a captive bred specimen. So there's a lot of risk in taking in wild caught specimens. But it also helps propagate the market for people to go out and catch these things in the wild. I mean, if nobody's buying them, if we're all insisting on captive bred specimens, that's gonna dry up the market. It's gonna drive those prices down even lower to the point that it's not even gonna be worth their time to go catch them and, and smuggle them just to sell for a profit. So yeah, you may save 10 or $20, but is it really worth it? Always try to go with a captive bred specimen. And one way to do that is to only buy from reputable tarantula dealers. Now my website, the tarantulacollective.com, I have a whole page devoted to tarantula dealers around the world. I don't have all of them. I don't have every country, but just as I've met people in the hobby and they've given me suggestions or referrals or I've used the company or I know someone that I trust that's like, this is a really good company. I went ahead and put them on the website as a reputable tarantula dealer knowing that they deal mainly, if not exclusively, in captive bred specimens. Most of them, they breed themselves. So always check that out. Be wary of tarantulas that are sold at pet stores because a lot of times they're gonna be selling you wild caught specimens. You know, a store like Petco or PetSmart or you know whatever the chain box pet store is in your country, they're a corporation, they're, they're looking to make a profit. So they're gonna buy the cheapest possible specimen they can and sell it for the highest profit, which usually means they're buying wild caught tarantulas or they're getting them from these like reptile farms that are also dealing in tarantulas and it's just a whole mess. They're not healthy, you don't know what you're getting and it's just it's just not good. It's not good for the hobby, it's not good for you, it's not good for the tarantulas, it's not good for the environment. So much love to Ants Canada, congratulations on your egg sack. It's gonna be awesome, I love the video, but I really don't think that this was parthenogenesis. I don't think that that's what happened. And until there's like some real scientific research showing that a tarantula can impregnate itself, yeah, I, I'm, that's not something I'm ever gonna be uh, believing. So hopefully this was just a case where someone bred a tarantula and sold it and it just inseminated itself again and it's not a wild caught specimen being introduced into the pet trade. But that's my spiel. Don't buy wild caught specimens. Support your local bug dealer. Subscribe if you want to see more content and thanks for buying tarantula collective merchandise. I will see you Tuesday.